Welcome to Nostalgia Comrade. Today we're going to look at one of the most cranberry rich movies, Rollerball. The original Rollerball was shot in 1975 and in fact is an extremely boring movie. It is very low paced, the plot is weak, the characters are poorly developed and the acting is just non-existing. The only thing the actors do is just wander around making uneasy long faces intended to reflect some hard inner thoughts. Even the sport scenes are not entertaining. However, the first rollerball has some nostalgia value, and it has mm. all that 70s tight but loose clothes, hairy man chests on display, natural female teats. Yes, that was the time of long haired women with no silicone and naturally plump limbs, and it's worth watching for that glow. In the new millennium, producers decided to reboot the franchise with a new installment named also Rollerball. The movie was released in 2002 and the only idea left from the original is the Rollerball game itself. All the rest is brand new. The plot takes place in former Soviet countries and that fills it with cranberries. The first cranberry appears right after the start. The postcard says hello from Kazakhstan in Russian. And even though it's spelled correctly, the official language in Kazakhstan is, surprise, Kazakh. Well, actually, Russian is a second language, almost like English in Canada. Kazakh is the official language, so the postcard would probably be in Kazakh. That means that the black guy specifically selected the Russian postcard, but attached an English business card. I'm sure the postcards were available in English as well. As for the game name, you can see it was translated into Russian. Actually, such translations are direct word-to-word -word transfer, like a software translator was used. The word rolik indeed is Russian for roller, but that's an industry term. The match is Russian for ball. The problem is, Russians do not translate sport game names, they just transliterate them. They have football, volleyball, basketball, and would have rollerball if the game actually existed. This is just wrong. The back translation would be golden crowd, which means nothing. What they meant was the Golden Horde, a military organization of Central Asian wanderers terrorizing medieval Russia for over 300 years. Vodka! Vodka! Oh yeah, vodka. Vodka is like cola for Americans. Everyone drinks it all the time, including pregnant women and newborns. The brand translation is like a cancer. Cancer meaning both cancer and a crab. Also, it says that's a beer. Looks more like ginger ale to me. The letters say take your seats according to your tickets. Pretty stupid thing to say in the middle of a match. The text under the screen means nothing, it's just a number of symbols. The interpreter says, yes, that's true, but now she is clean. First of all, Russians don't say like that. There are a number of terms meaning not using drugs now, but clean is not one of them. But the main problem here is her wild accent. The intonation is also weird. Russian is obviously not her native tongue. And that is what I cannot understand at all. Aren't there hundreds of native Russian speakers in Hollywood? Why don't you employ them to do the voiceover? Or their work as janitors sweeping the floors of Universal Studios is just too important to be interrupted. Oh yeah, vodka again. It's like air in Russia. Uh, sorry, Kazakhstan. It feels like we got the freeways to ourselves. We are... Not a rich country, so. This is just not true. Kazakhstan has very low fees on import cars, and a lot of people can afford at least used cars from Germany and Japan, and of course Russia. There is a lot of secondhand junk on the road. With this place, the state housing authority sold off the apartments, then they went out of business. So what? They never sold off the hallways. There was no one to take care of them. No shit. That's not true again. All the common use areas are owned by the landlord. 
The policemen, or whoever they are, actually look rather fancy. <laughs> wow, what is that? A free Axel Jeep? Why on earth would you want one? A Cherokee's engine cannot generate enough power to drive a 6 on 6, and even if it could, the vehicle is just too light to gain from an additional set of wheels. These are obviously free wheels, so it's just for looks. For very brutal looks. That is the most hilarious part in the whole movie. The inscription says in love and memory, and the only right place for the flowers shaped like that is a funeral. They are never brought to hospitals. The text on screen is just random symbols again. The letters at the back say under hidden camera surveillance. Why on earth would you want to say that to sporting fans during a match? On the whole, the movie is a complete nonsense. Sport fans causing a revolution? Why will you want to kill the rollable management anyway? According to the movie, the show gives them a lot of entertainment and the chance to win some money on bets. So it actually makes the fans' life more exciting. So why would they want to rebel against rollable? I don't know, are these mistakes intentional or they are just from ignorance? But all these cranberries make the film a lot more fun to watch. This completes this review, so see you next time!